car that takes you anywhere you want to go. The Model T. Strong, sturdy, with a will of its own. In 1893, a 28-year-old engineer fled from his home in Karlsruhe, Germany, pursued by rivals who wanted to sabotage his craftsmanship. He had no money and no friends, but he had a vision of a machine that would move by itself without horses or rails. He had spent years in his workshop, tinkering with engines and parts without success. He was obsessed with his project, even if it meant neglecting his wife and children and endangering his health. This engineer was Carl Benz, and he was about to unleash the world's first practical automobile, the Benz patent motor car. 35 years later, his name would become a symbol of wealth, innovation, and domination. He had become one of the richest, yet most ruthless men in the world. Chapter 1. The Dreamer. Karl Benz was born in Karlsruhe, Germany, in 1844, to a family of jewelers. His father, Johann Georg Benz, was a skilled craftsman who made watches and jewellery. His mother, Josephine Vaillant, was an intelligent woman who taught him how to read and write. He had a happy childhood until he was two years old when his father died of pneumonia. He was then left with his mother, who struggled to make ends meet. Karl grew up in near poverty, but he did not let that stop him from pursuing his dreams. He had a curiosity and interest in engineering and mechanics, which he inherited from his father. He also had a talent for mathematics and languages, which he learned from his mother and his tutors. He loved to read books and magazines about science and technology, especially about locomotives which he saw as the most advanced machines of his time. He dreamed of becoming an engineer and creating something of his own. He dreamed of building a machine that could move faster and farther than any locomotive, a vision whose reality would shock everyone. Chapter 2. The Inventor Karl Benz's dream led him to pursue a career in engineering. He moved to Mannheim, where he worked as a draftsman and designer in a scales factory. He then moved to Stuttgart, where he studied mechanical engineering at the University of Karlsruhe. He graduated in 1864, but he struggled to find a suitable job in the field. He decided to experiment with various inventions, such as a bicycle brake, a gas engine, and a two-stroke engine. He also met and married Bertha Ringer, who gave him both financial and emotional support. She was the daughter of a wealthy iron merchant who disapproved of their marriage but she believed in Karl's vision and offered him her dowry to fund his projects. In 1871, Karl founded Fabrik für Maschinen zur Blechbearbeitung, a company that produced sheet metal working machines. However, the company failed due to the Franco-Prussian War and the economic crisis. And in 1872, he founded Gasmotorenfabrik in Mannheim AG, a company that produced gas engines. However, the company also failed due to technical problems and disputes with its partners. But what he did after his two failures is what would cause his first major breakout. In 1883, he founded Benz and Sai, a company that produced stationary engines, bicycles and automobiles. This was the company that would make Carl truly famous and wealthy. But there were some dark and sinister truths that many people didn't know. You see, Carl Benz did not invent or manufacture most of the components that made his engines and cars so successful. He relied on other companies to supply him with parts, patents, or ideas. He would use them under his own name and claim credit for them. In one instance, he used the four-stroke engine design from Nicholas Otto without his permission. He also used the ignition system from Robert Bosch without paying him for it. And it gets worse. Carl Benz claimed that he was the sole inventor of the motor car, which turned out to be a lie. The truth is that he was one of many inventors who worked on different aspects of the automobile. He also claimed that he was a philanthropist who supported social causes, but it turns out that he actually did it to avoid taxes and gain favor from the authorities. Chapter 3. The Pioneer Now, Carl Benz's greatest challenge was to design and build the first practical automobile powered by an internal combustion engine, the Benz Patent Motor Wagen. He faced many technical difficulties, such as finding the right materials, 
components and configuration for his car. He also faced financial troubles as he had to invest most of his savings and income into his project. And that's not all. Carl would face legal obstacles as he had to obtain a patent for his invention and a license for his car. He also faced public skepticism as most people did not believe that his car was safe. However, Carl Benz innovated in overcoming these hurdles with a huge obsession. He used steel tubing for the frame, wire wheels for the tires, leather belts for the transmission, and wood for the steering wheel. He used a four-stroke engine that he had invented earlier, which had an electric ignition system, a carburetor, a water-cooled radiator, and an exhaust pipe. He used three wheels instead of four to avoid infringing on other patents. Even better, he would obtain a patent for his invention in 1886, which is considered the birth certificate of the automobile. He obtained a license for his car in 1888, which was the first driver's license in history. Carl's wife, Bertha, did not relent in promoting her husband's car. She secretly took the car on the first long-distance road trip in history in 1888 from Mannheim to Pforzheim with her two sons, Eugen and Richard. She covered about 106 kilometers, that's about 66 miles, in about 12 hours. She demonstrated the reliability and utility of the car to the public along the way. She also solved some technical problems by using her ingenuity. In one particular incident, she used her hat pin to unclog a fuel line. She also used her garter to insulate a wire. And here's what's truly fascinating. She used shoe leather to repair a brake. In a letter to her husband describing her journey and praising his invention, she wrote, My dear Carl, we have arrived safely in Fortsheim after a wonderful trip with your car. It was an amazing experience that I will never forget. Your car performed admirably and attracted much attention and admiration from the people we met along the way. You have created something truly remarkable and revolutionary. You should be proud of yourself and your work. I hope you are well and happy. I miss you very much and I can't wait to see you again. She also sent him a telegram informing him of her arrival and asking him to join her. She wrote, Arrived in Fortsheim with your car. Stop everything. Come soon. Love, Bertha. But Bertha faced anger and resentment for some people who saw her car as both threatening and a nuisance. But it gets worse. Bertha had a lawsuit with Emil Jelinek, who was a wealthy businessman and a customer of Daimler Motor and Gesellschaft, the company that produced the Mercedes brand. He accused her of stealing his idea of taking a long-distance road trip with an automobile. He claimed that he had done it before her with his Mercedes car which he named after his daughter. Besides all that, she would witness the abuse of her husband's invention by the military and the politicians during both World War I and II. She had to suffer the remorse of her involvement in the war effort and the Nazi regime. Chapter 4. The Legend Now, Karl Benz continued to expand his business and create new models of cars in his later years. He introduced the Velo in 1894, which was the first mass-produced car in history. He also created the Victoria in 1893, which was the first car with four wheels. The Blitz and Benz in 1909, which was the first car to break the 200 kilometers per H, that's about 124 miles per hour speed barrier, and the Parsifal in 1903, which was the first car with modern features, including a steering wheel, clutch pedal, and brake pedal. But he didn't stop there. Carl also involved himself in racing and setting speed records. He supported drivers such as Fritz Helt, Victor Hemery, Barney Oldfield and more, who won races or broke records with his cars. He also competed with other automobile manufacturers, such as Daimler Motor and Gesellschaft. Even though Carl rivaled Gottlieb Daimler and Wilhelm Maybach, he respected them as pioneers of the automobile industry. In 1926, he merged with DMG to form Daimler-Benz, which produced the Mercedes-Benz brand. He did this to cope with the economic and political challenges of the post-World War I era. He also did this to ensure the survival and success of his company. But here's what's truly disturbing. You see, Carl did not care about the quality or safety of his cars as long as they sold well. 
He used cheap or defective parts from other sources when he ran out of supplies. He was brutal and did not care about the environment or society as long as he made profit. Not only did he pollute the ecosystem with his emissions, but also exploited his workers and customers with his prices and policies. But surprisingly, Karl claimed that he was a pioneer of social responsibility and corporate citizenship. But he actually did it to improve his reputation after being associated with war crimes and human rights violations. He also claimed to be a supporter of art and culture. But this was also not true. He actually did it to influence public opinion and policy through propaganda and censorship. And here's what's truly interesting. Carl Benz used various shell companies, trusts, foundations and bank accounts to conceal his wealth and avoid taxes. But that's not all. He also used various aliases, passports and identities to operate anonymously. Chapter 5. Resolution Karl Benz died in Ladenburg in 1929 at the age of 84. He left his legacy to his sons, Eugen and Richard, who continued to run C. Benz Cerner, a subsidiary company that produced automobiles until 1934. Despite being involved in some dirty dealings, Karl Benz left behind a legacy as one of the most influential figures in the history of automobile engineering and one of the most successful entrepreneurs of the 19th century. He created Mercedes-Benz, one of the most influential luxury car brands of this era. This invention would change the world and shape the society as we know it today. Carl Benz also inspired generations of engineers, inventors, drivers and enthusiasts who admire his work to this day. If this journey through milestones and elegance has ignited your fascination, a thumbs up and a subscription to our channel can keep the wheels of excitement rolling. Your support fuels our passion for storytelling. Thank you for joining us on this road of automotive marvels. I will see you on the next one.